Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm your host, Gene Bailey. Today, we're going to talk about revivals and being the one, but what if you just don't want to do it? Genesis 26, 18 tells us, Isaac dug again the wells of Abraham. In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the Spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. What if you just don't want to do it? What if you're tired, you don't really want to do it, you don't feel like it, you're having a bad day? I well, think, Gene, we're all like that. Yeah. But like King David, I remember he, he sacrificed a praise. I think it's a choice. A choice. I'm going to choose to do it. Well, at this show, we're going to look and answer the question of how Smith Wigglesworth walked all of this out. At the turn of the 20th century, one man's message of faith transformed nations. Smith Wigglesworth entered the annals of revival history by simply making a decision. Time and again, he chose to reach out by faith to help people who were hurting. The result, God brought widespread healings and calls to repentance to many, which gave rise to a revival that literally spread across the world. His life choices released the Holy Spirit to work in his life and powerfully impacted 20th century believers. Over a hundred years later, his teachings are still transforming lives. Well, one way that Smith Wigglesworth walked it out was he was in Australia and he saw a guy who was twisted over. He had a cane in his hand and his face looked tortured. And he was with his friend and he looked and he said, am I gonna, oh, do I just pass this guy? And then there's just like a, something just flipped on inside. He's no. So he goes over to the guy and he says, if you will meet me in five minutes over in front of this hotel, you will get prayed for and you will walk out with no pain and straight and you'll be the, your back will be the straightest back on the face of the planet. Mm. So he goes and he does this stuff, comes back five minutes later and there's the guy sitting in front of the hotel, all bent over. And somehow they get him up to, uh, up to Smith's hotel room. He prays for him. And five minutes later, the guy literally walks out, his back wow. straight, no pain. Amazing. That's amazing. I mean, I was thinking <clears throat> just about a younger version of Smith uh, Wigglesworth. I, I want to take you back to the 1880s. He's about 20 years old. He's staying at home. And of course, his mom's at home. <clears throat> and he was a passionate soul winner. And so we hear the stories about of him raising the dead and healing the sick, but he was a soul winner. He was. And in his lunch break, he was an apprentice. He was a, a plumber. <clears throat> and in his, his lunch breaks, he would go out and his goal was to, to win at least one person each day. But this time he prayed a bit differently. It's a great story. Uh, and he said, Lord, I want to reach the one who is nearest to eternity. <clears throat> and so he went out and it's half an hour and there's people everywhere. Now, today in, in Bradford, I was there just a short time ago, there's automobiles and there's, but it, there was thousands of people who were walking and horse and carts and stuff like that. <clears throat> and so there's all these people and he's saying, Lord, who's the one that I'm supposed to minister to? And all these people go by 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. He's saying, Lord, I've got to get back to work and, and work extra hours. And so, an hour and 10, 15, after 90 minutes, this horse and cart just comes by. And that verse out of the book of Acts where Philip, mm. he jumped onto the chariot or horse and cart of the day of the, the, the Ethiopian just jumped in him. So he didn't introduce himself. He just jumped up and started sharing the, uh, the gospel. His main concern wasn't really the guy. He's thinking, I've got to work extra hours here. And so, and this guy just said, you've reached the wrong man. You've spoken to the wrong man. Don't talk to me about that. And there was that moment mm. <clears throat> of, oh, that doubt just right. came. Lord, did I, you know, uh, 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 miss it here and blow it here? <clears throat> and he clearly heard the Lord say, no, he's the one. <clears throat> So he just jumped back in and this guy is not nice as well. And, but after a short time, just tears come down. 
And so he realizes that God is, is really touching his heart. He leads him to the Lord. He jumps off and goes to work and forgets about the guy. <laughs> okay, so fast forward now, three weeks, and he's at home. And his, his mom is saying, hey, Smith, have you been witnessing, you know, to, to people a, a, a gain about salvation? And it's like, mom, I'm always doing that. <laughs> And she said, well, a funny thing happened last night. I was visiting <clears throat> a very sick man <clears throat> and I said to him, would you like for someone to come and pray with you? And he told a story. He said he was out and about three weeks ago and it was the last time he was in, in, uh, in public because he, he got real sick, wow. you know, soon after <clears throat> that this man just jumped on his horse, <clears throat> I mean, on his car and shared the gospel. And, and he described to me who it was. And his mom said this, Smith, I think you were the one. Right. Oh. You know, that, that lines up with Wigglesworth and his belief about faith. Mm -hmm. Wigglesworth said that faith is facts to be believed, commands to be obeyed. And so what he was doing is waiting for the command on who this was. And when he got in there, mm -hmm. he didn't think it was. And then he heard, no, he is the one. And so he obeyed the command again. And then finally promises to be enjoyed. That's, that's Wigglesworth, how he saw mm -hmm. faith. You've you, you yeah. got to obey the command. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, like you said earlier, he still had to choose. Yeah, he chose. Yes. He had to choose his time. And like, I'm not going because of the pressure of getting back, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. the, the, the daily life. Yeah, yeah. So I had to, he had to make a choice. And here's the end of that. His mom said, Smith, he went to be with the Lord last night. Wow. wow. Now, Smith didn't know all that. No. And I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure that we've all had those moments. Sure. Go and share with that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but. Yeah. Uh, or how many people would have gone, oh, I'm sorry, at the first. Right, yeah. At the first rebuttal. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Know. True. Um, <clears throat> what about, you know, your, you know, there's opportunities present themselves everywhere. Yeah. What about if you're in a store and you're just shopping? And you get interrupted. Oh my gosh, Smith Wigglesworth was in a you know shoe store, right? You know, little shoemaker back then they made shoes. We would have a shoe repairer, or we would go over to Walmart or something. Mm. But he was in this in the store. He saw a guy, and this man had a green shade over his eyes. He was crying, and he was in great agony. And when Smith, you know, he's he's in there for shoes, and he and he. So the shoemaker tells him, he says, that the guy had inflammation that was burning out his eyes. Mm. And this compassion rose up on Smith. And I think that's important, too, that to ha recognize Absolutely. when that compassion shows up. And he went up to the man and he said, you devil, come out of this man in the name of Jesus. And instantly the man says, it's all gone. The pain is left. I can see now. And basically, you know, that's what inspired him to set aside a little bit of time every single day, over an hour, wasn't it, for, for salvation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so there was the one time that Wigglesworth was on the train. Right. And the Spirit of God came on him so heavily that it says that his face shone mm -hmm. and that within three minutes or so, everyone on the train was coming up to him to receive Jesus. But that all comes from not because he has a seminary degree, not because sure. he's yeah. a doctor by his name, not because right. he's an evangelist that everybody knows. He was a plumber. He's just a guy and, yeah. and he spent time with the Lord. And I think to be the one requires us to just be available. Robert Haldane did 10 months, led 16 guys to the Lord and the entire continent of Europe was transformed. And you know, no one is ever wowed by your intellectual knowledge or your, your like you said, your seminary degree or anything like that. They, they're impressed by hey, this guy's been with something. Yeah. He's got like the light on his face shown. Amazing, amazing stuff. What, what about when you're, uh, <clears throat> you know, there are times you walk into, you meet somebody and they're dealing with a life problem that's about to destroy their whole life. Well, that's the thing is that I have a son that he feels like his calling is business. So this businessman came up to Smith Wigglesworth one night and said, I can't sleep. My, my prosperous business has gone bankrupt. I am just, I'm, I'm at my rope's end. I have nowhere else to go. And, and, and what do I do? My life is miserable. And Smith told him, go home and in the name of Jesus, sleep. And so the man turned around and he, he was kind of like reluctant. And 
Smith said to him, go. And the next morning he called up on the telephone and he said to where Smith was staying, he said, hey, um, tell Smith I, I slept all night and I want to see him at once. And so basically he saw Smith in person, said, I'm a new man. Wonderful. And he said, okay, now I've, I still have a bankrupt business. Can you help me make it prosperous? And Smith says, in the name of Jesus, <laughs> yes, come tonight and, and, and we'll start you on that road. And so he went to the meeting that night. The man accepted Christ. And it just, he began learning Bible precepts, Bible concepts. Mm -hmm. And his business was put back. He's a man it. of faith. Yeah. Yeah. Doug, you knew someone that knew Smith. Yeah, it's just a great little, uh, uh, you know, story that that I have. I'm on vacation in the south of England. It's actually called the, the Isle of Wight, where Queen Victoria had her vacation home there. And I'm in a kind of Christian kind of a guest house, and I was speaking to the owner and just kind of, you know, checking him out as far as if he was Baptist or spirit-filled, and I mentioned the name of Smith Wigglesworth, and he just lit up. He said, oh, Ray's here. He knew Smith, so I mean, instantly wow. I'm thinking, oh my word, I've got just a list of a hundred, you know, things I want to ask. So I find where he is, and it would it would be an understatement, you know, to say that Ray was old. <laughs> so I said, hey Ray, I understand that you knew Smith, and I was asking him all these great things, and and he just um, he kept falling asleep. <laughs> so but here's my one little story here. He said, hey Doug, he said. Um, as a young man, I was at a youth camp and I found a, uh, a whole bunch of, of chickens with eggs and I took these eggs and I, and I presented them to the great man of God. And Smith said to him, well, I really appreciate that. But he said, I've been told that I shouldn't eat eggs like that because <laughs> it's not good for me. Mm -hmm. and, and at the time I was thinking, my word, that's just like Wesley, isn't it? He, he, so um, even though we know about the miracles and the spiritual side, right. there was a natural side to the sure. guy too. He took care of himself. So that's my amazing spiritual story. Of <laughs> 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 what about, you know, when you, you go and you attend a church service and you, you, you hear somebody talking about you can get healed and, and you hear this teaching, what do you do with it then? Well, basically, uh, you've got these awesome services where people are learning things. And there's just this stirring up when you hear the Word of God. Faith mm -hmm. comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Well, there was this coal miner who heard this, all this, this amazing miracles. He's watching things happen. And so he says, okay, well, what happens? I'm a coal miner. I've got a stiff knee. What happens if I believe, target my faith basically in his vernacular back in those days for this? What will oh. happen? And so he does. He lays his faith out by his stripes you were healed and he does it to his knee and he walks around and he it works it, it, it it's there's a success there and that not only that it, he goes to a, pr a prayer meeting because remember uh, this is time period when all of the coal miners were starting to find Christ and and have Bible studies and so he says to them see God healed my knee and and so he they said well I, I have a problem with my elbow I have a problem with my knee I have a problem with my stomach. so they go around yeah. and they lay hands on everybody and God healed everybody. And it started with one person yeah, sharing the being message. obedient. Yeah. All right, so what if maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm on vacation, I'm on a ship and a man collapses and everybody panics. What do I do? <laughs> well, now I've got a, 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 a Smith Wigglesworth story, but I'm gonna start off with a personal story. I was just um, on the phone this morning to a friend and that happened. Mm. He attends my church, he's called Leroy, and he's a quiet guy. He's not a, uh, and he's not a, 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 a preacher. He's owned flower shops, you know, for right. years, and he loves to go on cruises. And, and he just told me this uh, this morning. So it's about 2005, in the month of June, he goes on a cruise. Well, he's just gotten back into church in January of that year, attending the church that I um, attend, and his pastor, Pastor Brett Freeman, had told him, you can do the works of Jesus, you can pray for the sick, right. and raise the dead. So wow. he just believes it. You know, he said, Doug, I had no religious background of any kind. So I think he's in the Bahamas 
<clears throat> you know, um, um, on these private islands, and he's in a, a restaurant with his group. And Leroy's a, sh a shy guy. He likes to stay with the group. Sure. And he just felt the Lord say, walk towards the beach. So he just leaves the group. He goes towards the beach, and there's a commotion happening there. And all the people here are from the, the cruise ship. <clears throat> And he gets there and they dragged a lady out of the ocean. She's not breathing and she's mm. turned blue. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and her poor daughter was just shaking and seeing her mom. And there was no one doing CPR. They're just in shock. And, and of course they're thinking, oh my word, she's dead. Leroy thinks, I can raise the dead. He's not a preacher. Right. <laughs> and so he just says, in the name of Jesus, breathe. And she goes, <gasps> like that. And that was it. Wow. And it, he just did what he'd been told. He said, I hadn't been in this, you know, long enough, you know, to realize it can't happen. Right. And I thought that was... A, <laughs> yeah. so, Jerry Savelle says that. Yeah. I, I didn't know how to do it wrong. I just read the Bible and believed it. And so that's yeah. on a cruise ship. How many of us have been on these cruises? Sure. So something sure. comes up, you just do all you know. And I thought that was great. Wigglesworth had a very similar thing. He was traveling from Egypt, I think, to Italy, and a guy collapses. Everyone's, you know, you know, crying, and he's just excited. He thinks, oh, this is a good opportunity. <laughs> so he just rebukes death, and this guy just wakes up, and he says, what's that all over me? I can feel something on me. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. And right. we have the same Holy Spirit and the same, yes. uh, you know, Bible that Smith Wigglesworth had, don't we? Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. So what about, what if your, your own family is saying, don't do it? What's the story of that one? Oh, my word. So Wigglesworth, he's visiting a man who is, who's very sick. And I think his mom was, was a big visitor because, you know, she shows up. And so she's there at the bedside. Now, of course, you must remember in those days, you were born at home and you died at home. And so that's just how it happened. The hospital system was not anything like it is here today. We call 911 and you, you know. And so she gets there and his mom says, he's dead, Smith. Don't do it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, that's like a red flag to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, his wife said no. So Smith said, I've been trying to witness to this guy. And while he was alive, he wouldn't <laughs> let me help him. He sure will when he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> not, not possible to hold it. Yeah, yes, yeah, because the guy can't argue now. So he rebukes death, and this guy wakes up. And Smith said he did get saved. And so he was an easier recipient of the gospel, I think, when he was dead than when he was alive. <laughs> and the first discussion of what hell looks like on the other side. Oh, oh yes. Sure. Yeah, sure. so I thought that's just a great story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What about when you get a request and you send out a handkerchief to somebody? Acts chapter 19. Yeah. Uh, with Paul. They took handkerchiefs from the body of Paul. They placed them on the sick people and they recovered. If there were evil spirits, they departed. Uh, that's a scriptural context. If you study why they did that in that time in, in the world. And I always troubled with that, Gene, because I always thought it's just one example in scripture of this. Well, there's not one example. There's a secondary example. When the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched the fringe or the tallit of Jesus, yeah. the hem of his garment, there again is cloth, a prayer cloth. Amen. That was her point of contact. Yes. Same thing with Elisha. So I found two or three places where I don't understand it. I'm not asked to understand it. I'm just asked to believe That's right. and, and act upon the word. It's exactly what that is. You got anything else, Doug? Another handkerchief miracle? Oh, my word. Here's a, uh, a, uh, a man. And, and we're in, Aus in Australia now. Wigglesworth, he traveled in, in, in his last days. And a woman comes up to him and says, my son is lazy, he will not work. I can't get him out of bed in the mornings. I'm sure there's a lot of families <laughs> can, right. can relate to that. So he said, let's pray with this prayer cloth and just put it under his head. Mm. So she did. And the next day, this man is changed. He, mm. I mean, he just wakes up because there's, there's, I mean, the life of God, you know, impregnates that and mm. just throws that darkness off of him. And um, there's more power here than we realize, isn't there, really, Gene? Yeah, there is, and and it's not, it's not just the, there's not the power of a handkerchief. No, right. Right. no, no, no. What no. is it? It's the anointing. The anointing that is residing on there, and you know, when the, when he took his prophet, he took Elijah's 
uh, mantle, which right. was his, his tallit, his cloth. And he, he wears the Lord God of Elijah. He's calling on that anointing that had been on him. It's, it's really just faith in the word. It's if I can touch the hem of his garment, as they took handkerchiefs from Paul. Right. It's not a magic pill or formula. That's right. It's the anointing. All right, so what about, you notice whenever Smith had to make a choice, he made a choice and he prayed for somebody and they were healed with it in five minutes or less. What's that all about? Well, there was a service in Norway uh. where, uh, again, Lil was talking about how he couldn't touch, lay hands on people, and so he prayed. But in this one service in Norway, he, he got the idea that he just was going to pray for everyone. And there was this anointing that had hit the whole service. The, every every se seat was filled, every windowsill was filled, every nook and cranny was filled. It was a jam-packed service. And the anointing of God, just the glory of God just filled the place. And so as he prayed, the message went out like a river. The power of God rested on everyone. Every single sinner in that place was, was accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. Every single uh, injured, unhealthy, you know, every person needing help received their miracle that day. Well, and under five minutes. All in under five minutes. It yeah. has to be. The only way I can try to answer that, try to wrap my mind around that, I'm being honest, because there were, were times in Scripture where it says that he could do no mighty work there. Right. You know, so even Jesus can't, and yet I'm seeing Wigglesworth doing it, I'm saying, so Lord, what is that? And as you were talking, I thought, it has to be, it has to be the corporate faith of the place. There's no unbelief in that room. Well, I, I remember wow. even, you know, being involved with healing ministries in the past decades. You know, you can walk into a place and it's the same team that was in the last city. And you walk into a place and you go, mm, this just doesn't feel right. And it's just, and nothing seems to flow. So there's absolutely something about the corporate faith. So what, I mean, I've experienced maybe it's, that. maybe it's the audience being the one. Well, Absolutely. Yeah. And it's the same time. It's it's in that same environment when night, you probably night tonight. Night tonight. Same venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same venue. Same. Mm. The second night, they see somebody got healed. The first night. Now it's a totally different story. Yeah. The second night. Now they're looky loos are gone. They're they're yeah. there to. Yeah, yeah. Now they're like, wow, so and so got saved. And you see that guy get out of a wheelchair. Yeah. How wonderful that was. I mean, that is. There's absolutely an element of corporate faith. But now Smith, as we've already learned. All he did was read the Bible. He didn't read any of the books. This man was devoted. He was committed. And he was uh, not just a stalwart, but he was tenacious in holding on to that to the Scripture. That's the man of faith. If that's all you do is read the Bible, let's get real. If that's all you do is read the Bible and see God do and listen to Him, things are going to change around you. Things are going to be different. To. It has to. Isaiah 55, 11, the word sent out does what it was sent out to do. My not word will not void. return unto me void. That's exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what if you've got a friend who, who has no legs or just has stumps and you hear the word of the Lord come to you and says, go get shoes. That is the ultimate, right? <laughs> because you have stumps. I mean. Now, where, where's the faith? The faith to get healed or the faith to go, why am I going to <laughs> shoes? Yeah, the shoes? You're like, I don't know. Right, right. Well, Smith was talking with his buddy, a curate in, of the Church of England. And of course he had, you know, they're just chatting. They're just having a perfectly lovely friend to friend chat. And Smith says, go get shoes, go get fitted for shoes. And the guy thought it was a joke. It was like, what? Yeah, I have stumps. I don't have feet, just in case you didn't notice. But he's up all night long and finally he says, okay, he's feeling the sense that God's saying, do it, go to the store. So he goes to the shoe store. Now, now imagine you're, you're, you're the guy. This is at Nike. They, they make <laughs> shoes oh, oh yes. to, to fit you. It's and, not like going to, you know, a department store. And you walk into it and, and you tell this guy. Um, Although you do just do it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, you have, be, you have to be, you have to be fitted. I know, I get it. Yeah. Go ahead. So the guy says, good morning, may I help you? And he says, I, I, can you get me a pair of shoes? And he says, what size and color? And then the, the guy looks at him and says, um, <clears throat> we can't help you. Sorry. And, and, and the guy says, it's all right, young man, but I, I want a pair of shoes, size eight, color black. So the assistant goes and he pulls out, he had that, that size in, in stock, and he pulls it out and he returns and he hands it to the man. And so the man puts his stump in the shoe, right? It's like, what? Instantly a foot and a leg grew. 
right in front of this assistant. One foot, one leg, the other foot, the other leg. I mean, <laughs> Gotta get some of them shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Uh -huh. Whatever he tells you to do, yeah. go do, do it. it. Go do it. It's That's not complicated, simple. is it, Gene? I mean, no, it's really not. No. It's really not. And, you know, we touched on the compassion, you know, of, of Jesus that you have to have. And Smith had compassion. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Lillian DeFin was telling us about, you know, the compassionate that would stand in the corner and, and you know, cry because he was able to afford to clothe some <laughs> traveling ministers. Wonderful. And uh, what, what a guy. What a guy. What, what a phenomenal. These are just a lot of quick stories that we've gone through today about excuses why you think it can happen, why you think he can't be used. And I, I really enjoy, this is one of the th reasons I love Todd White. He just goes and he just does it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just goes out there, finds somebody, there's compassion, he loves on them. The love of Jesus is so present and it's infectious and that's all we've got to do. We don't have to figure out why. We didn't have to figure out how is God going to make feet and legs grow into shoes? <laughs> All I need to do is go get, do my part and go get the shoes. Mm -hmm. So be the one. We, we sometimes think that we have to be called to go to Russia or somewhere. You don't. Just be the one. Be available. Be, be bold. Uh, be the one in prayer. Be the one in giving. Be the one uh, in the audience. Right. Some of the members in our else. church. That's uh, it. They wake up and, and they say, okay, Lord, what's our assignment today? And they'll jump on their little motorcycle and they'll go and they'll pray for someone. And then they'll come back. Just say yes. So be the one in Walmart, in the restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we've always had that. You know, I mean, I always remember this. I was, this was just years ago and I wasn't the one, Gene. And, and this young man, he was from India. He was working in the restaurant and, you know, I just took a shine to him. He was a young guy in the, he was learning English. And a few weeks, you know, afterwards, I, I thought, I'm gonna, you know, be the one for him. And I came back and I said, where's so-and-so? And the guy dropped his head and said, oh, he was killed by a drunk driver last week. Oh, wow. And I thought, oh my word. And we've all been there, haven't we, honestly? Mm. Sure. Yeah, honestly, right. but it's just a small decision. Uh, okay, look stupid and put your foot in it. Right. But do something, and, so, uh, and great things can there's happen. There's some people, you know, you can't, um, maybe you're homebound or, or whatever else. You can still be the one in prayer. You can That's still right. be the one in supporting Christian television or, or, yeah. or ministry yeah. or whatever. There's still ways that you can be the one. There's prayer groups online. And there's basically our entire ministry here, I have left, you know, and, and brought to them many times and said, Pray for us over this. And time and time again, I see this massive miracle take place. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's it for today. We've gone along, but take this today. Take the word that you've heard. Take all these instances, all these excuses of where Smith Wigglesworth looked in the face of doubt and defeat and became the one anyway. Amen. We'll see you next week.